coming to you from a studio somewhere out there. It's Enough Already Radio with Fingers Malloy and Tracy O'Connors. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome once again to another Enough Already podcast. I'm Fingers, she's Tracy. Tracy, we have so much we could talk about this week. I mean, it, it feels like uh, one story hits, and you're like, wow, things can't get crazier, and then another story hits. And you're like, wow, that's topping the first story that was crazy just a couple of hours ago. It's 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 nuts. Uh, the, the story that's been dominating the news the last few days is this governor of uh, Virginia. They call it Virginia? Yes. Yes, correct. Uh, Ralph Northam. Mm-hmm. So... Ralph Northam is on a, I don't know if this is a uh, NPR local affiliate in uh, Virginia, uh, but he's he's talking about uh, the abortion bill mm-hmm. uh, th- that uh, they're trying, the lefties are trying to get passed in, in Virginia. And I, I feel uncomfortable talking about the abortion issue. It's It's way down on my priority list. But his comments were so outrageous. He basically said, uh, you know, they're trying to take the restrictions off of the third trimester abortion. Tracy. Mm-hmm. And he said, listen, uh, I want it between the, the, the decision should be made between the father, the mother, and uh, the physician. And then he went further and said, it could even be a situation where the baby is born, the baby will be kept comfortable. And then there will be a discussion between the mother and the physician as to uh, how they should move forward. Mm-hmm. Which uh, talk about barbaric, right? Did you? But see is this clip? a case of a misunderstanding? Right. Yes, I did. And then I've seen the subsequent fallout from it, and I do have to wonder if he was just inartfully uh, inarticulate there. And didn't mean everybody's interpreting this as he means that a baby is born, everything is fine with the baby, right? And then you decide to kill it. And I don't, I don't think that that's what he meant to say. Okay, you're being fair, and that's fine. But here, here's the thing: what I found striking about that clip is you had two women in the room interviewing him, and he mm-hmm. makes these comments. Not a follow up. Not a, <laughs> not a look of shock. Over what the governor had just said? Wouldn't you say, well, listen, governor, can you clarify your comments? Uh, Let me understand you. Uh, See if maybe I'm misunderstanding what you're trying to say. And then ask a follow-up. Instead, it was like, hmm, yeah, okay. Uh, We have a caller in Alexandria. (laughs) It's like, what? (laughs) I mean, wouldn't you be shocked if you were sitting in a radio studio and a governor just dropped that, that dime down on everyone? Would, would you be like, yes. wow, uh, yeah. let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, are you saying that, okay, this is an attempt, an abortion attempt that fails and the baby, some survives, but, you know, they're just hanging in there and then we have to have a discussion about whether we do anything? Is that what you're trying to say, Governor? It's uh, well, unbelievable. This, that's the kind of journalism you get at, apparently at NPR. <laughs> well, is that surprising? <laughs> so that happens, and of course, like you you said, after those remarks uh, hit the airwaves and the internet's all hell broke loose. Yes. So then, what was it? One day or two days later, mm-hmm. his old yearbook <laughs> happens to hit the internet's. <laughs> And this is what he was in medical school, a medical school yes. yearbook. Yes. I, who knew such things existed? Right. And there's a, a page dedicated to him, and it's got his picture. Uh, he, he's got a smirk on his face, Tracy. I saw that. And there's a picture of uh, someone in blackface standing next to someone in, the, in a Klan uniform. And again, all hell breaks loose. Do we call those uniforms? Uniforms? What do you call it? Outfit? Yeah, outfit. A clan outfit? Oh, I don't yeah. know. Get up, costume. 
So again, all hell breaks loose. Uh, he first uh, he, he apologizes, then he denies it's him. So th- then he has a press conference, and this is what I found hilarious. I don't know. Did you see any of this press conference? No, I have better things to do. I heard it went on for about an hour. Yeah, uh, he 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 apologized. He's not sure if either one of the people in the photo is actually him. And mm. then he uh, goes on to mention, listen, uh, I have a complicated past, uh, much like our state's history has a complicated past. And uh, it basically says, I am Virginia. Because oh, okay. he, things are complicated. He, he may have done some things that are questionable, just like the, the state of Virginia has a history of doing some questionable, thing, questionable things. And... Uh, the whole thing was just a complete fiasco. If this guy, uh, we're recording this on Saturday night, February the 2nd, 2019. If this guy has a job three days from now, I'll be shocked. Oh, I'm so- I would be shocked if he survives the weekend. I'm shocked that he did this today. I thought for sure this would be the resignation because I did not know this and perhaps you were aware and some of our listeners were, but Virginia has a one term limit for governors i don't know how i feel about that i guess one term yeah i guess if your your state is used to that but you're a lame duck as soon as you're elected yeah pretty much so i okay if it works for virginia yeah so look i didn't watch the whole thing uh something came up about michael jackson Yes. What do you know about so, this? So so he originally had said, oh, you know, I'm not sure if that's me. Then I know it's not me. And for those of you who haven't seen the photo, I would suggest Googling it because it is funny. But the whole page is dedicated to him. It says his name across the top of the page. There's a, you know, a nice photo of him and uh, I believe he's wearing a tie. And then there's a photo of him like drinking a beer doing something out in the wild, and then there's a photo of him next to a car, and then there's this photo of somebody in blackface with somebody in a Klan getup. So the, at his press conference, he says that's not him in the photo. Mm-hmm. But he did, however, at a different time, appear in blackface because he was being Michael Jackson. And so this is when Michael Jackson was still black in the 80s. Right. So he said in 1984, yes, he did appear in blackface, but it was a Michael Jackson thing. And I don't I, I don't see the sense in pulling the audio. First of all, I thought at the press conference today he was either going to resign or he was going to mm-hmm. surround himself with uh, African-Americans. Yeah. And say, look, I've got plenty of black friends. See? Well, he did say that. Oh, did he? He pulled that number? Yes. Yes. A member of the press. Um, and I, I got this from Michelle Malkin's Twitter account. He was a- Someone in the press asked if he can still moonwalk. <laughs> I, I cannot believe a serious journalist covering a press conference like this would ask such a trivial question. I, I guess I shouldn't say I can't believe it. I should be, believe it. I, but I'm, I'm stunned that this question would even be asked at that moment. It just shows you how seriously they take this whole thing. Right. And then this dope actually thinks about it for a second and has to turn to his wife. And then his wife said, oh, uh, you know, our, our, she's probably thinking, are, are you an idiot? And, <laughs> and then he goes, oh, you know what? Yeah, it's not an appropriate time. No shit. <laughs> you're, you're, you're fighting for your political life and you're about ready to break out into a dance. Yep. So that's the news of the day. You don't think he's going to last the weekend? No, I don't think so. Prominent Democrats have come out. Well, it was interesting in the beginning, right? Because they're usually wagon circlers. Right. Like hardcore, they will fight to defend their own. And so when this first broke on Twitter, I think I saw it around four or five o'clock on Friday, I want to say, maybe a little bit later in the afternoon. But 
I, I wanted to see how the, the Democrats are in Virginia are reacting and they're all, oh, we've known him. He's wonderful. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yep, yep, this will get buried. And then the tides turned. I think, uh, I know Kamala Harris weighed in on this. This is unacceptable and he needs to go and blah, blah, blah. You know, can never be tolerated. So that's what you're going to see. They don't want, they don't all want a microphone shoved in their face. Right. And asked whether or not they agree with this and are be forced to condemn him, which is used to not happen so much. But now that you've got people that are willing to just hunt politicians down. Yeah, you got good right wing with journalists. With their cell phones. Yeah. Right. And they say, what do you think about this? Because that's and you what can all, happens. I mean, yes. That's what happens on the right all the time. I mean, do you condemn? I, do you condemn? Yeah, every Republican was Todd Aiken. Mm-hmm. For those who remember Todd Aiken, Todd Aiken made some ridiculous remarks about what was rape, rape or something, legitimate rape or and abortion yes. and pregnancy, something like that. And then at that point, every journalist who had a microphone would run to the nearest Republican <laughs> and say, you know, basically try to frame the narrative. Why are all you Republicans like Todd Aiken? Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, this guy skates uh, for a while until, and now you're seeing. And the thing, the thing that's funny is, it wasn't too long ago where you had a a former senator that was a Democrat who was actually in the Klan. Hmm. I will say for Robert Byrd, where I, I do have, and I cannot believe I'm going to say this, I have more respect for Robert Byrd than I have this cat, this Ralph North Northrum is, uh, I, you know, I can't look into a man's heart and know what's really in there. But it, Robert Byrd at least came out and said, I disavow my time in the Klan. I was the biggest mistake of my life. Yeah, This guy has these pictures in his yearbook, goes from I'm sorry to, oh, it's not me, to at one point during his press conference, he claimed he had not seen that yearbook until yesterday had no idea that 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 page existed and and tried to hide behind his army service saying oh you know i i didn't see i I was in the army so i i didn't see it didn't you're trying to tell people that you knew nothing of this page you didn't have any friends or family that may have said hey ralphie boy (laughs) this isn't a good look for you pal well, some news organization that I saw has actually spent more time with the yearbook, and there's several photos of people in blackface. Oh, wow. So that was a thing at that uh, medical school. Well, did you hear what his nickname was? Oh, uh, I, I don't know. Go ahead. Coon Man. I, yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Coon Man. That was his nickname in college. Are you kidding I'm me? sure there's another reason for that perfectly innocuous <laughs> well he claimed that his real name I, I if i heard it correctly and i was recording a, a different show at the time uh while the 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 po- uh, the, the press conference was going on he, his name was goose because his voice would kind of crack and go one octave higher that's what he claimed but he said he, i he goes i do remember two people uh who were older than me would call me coon man but i have no idea why they were calling me coon man oh really did you take a look at your yearbook I'm surprised they didn't just say, no, they were calling me Moon Man because I unparalleled moonwalking skills. <laughs> we have to do a parody of uh, uh, Soundgarden Spoon Man. That's what I was thinking. But, you know, we would get in more trouble than he ever will. Yeah, absolutely. Unbelievable. That but, this is I mean, happening. what's the thinking here? Like, oh, that wasn't me in blackface, but there was one time so was, that I did do that. So is the thinking then he knows there's actually photos of that that are just waiting to be dropped right. at this point? Drip. The Andrew Breitbart School drip, of drip. Journalism. Drip, 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 drip. Well, and as plenty of people have pointed out on Twitter, but let me jump in on this too. What the hell is wrong with the, the oppo research team that Ed Gillespie used? Yeah. I mean, at this point, somebody better be out looking at every single damn Democrat's yearbooks. You would hope. But you I, would. I, and and I, I'm going to bring up something that not many people have brought up. I haven't really seen anybody bring this up because maybe it's not exactly uh, 
it's not exactly the first thing you think of when it comes to this story. Uh, but I go back to what I was thinking when I saw the interview on Ask the Governor on WTOP, where you had two women listening to the governor saying those awful things and not at least ra- no eyebrows were raised. He might as well mm-hmm. have said, uh, I'm having chicken soup today. <laughs> oh, oh okay. let's take some calls. <laughs> Usually a yearbook has a yearbook staff. Uh, mm-hmm. Someone in the faculty is uh, also in charge of the yearbook. Uh, th- p- there were a ton of people that looked at this page, not just him, but others, and were like, "Oh, that's totally cool." And, yeah, and, and don't tell me this was a different time in our country. This guy isn't that much older than me. He's older than me. I think he's like fifty six. Uh, Listen, I grew up in the 80s, and I, I can tell you this. Um, I would never, or anyone around me, uh, would never be associated with someone who wanted to take pictures of themselves in blackface or in a KKK outfit. Do we determine outfit, yes. uniform? Sure. So it's, don't give me a... Di- it was a different time. No, I mean, that's the more shocking thing, and nobody's talking about that. Why Why are we just focusing on the one thing? The other thing is just as awful. Yeah. And I, I just did a quick search. I thought maybe he could hide behind a soul man defense. Did you ever see that terrible movie? <laughs> no. With C. Thomas I rem- Howell? I remember it, but I, 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 when I saw the trailer, I didn't go running to theaters to see it. I think I saw, I've seen clips of it. They used to run it in the USA. Um. <laughs> But yeah, that came out after this, I believe. 1986 is when that movie came out. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Maybe there, there are more photos to come. Not only was he Michael Jackson, but... He was Prince. He was also... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just so bizarre. To your point, I mean, was there no no control over this book? <laughs> right? And, and you're talking about med school. This is not, te- you know, this is not teenagers. Yes. So to be in med school, you got to be in your mid twenties, right? Maybe or I guess early twenties is possible. Yeah. Old enough to know better. Yeah. I, I, I was a freshman in high school at one point, and I would have known to run as far away from someone who said, <laughs> "Hey, I got a really funny idea." Get the hell away from me. Are you out of your mind? Huh. This is funny. Mm -hmm. And part of me thinks (laughs) there may have been a yearbook staff that was putting this together and uh, those pictures were submitted and they thought, oh, that's just Coon Man being Coon Man. (laughs) That's why we call him Coon Man. Yeah. Good God. What a world. And then there was a time a couple of days ago when the, the, the news first broke where CNN was co- talking, covering the story. And then on the screen, it said Republican governor. It was just the, the R, the parenthetical R. But yeah, yes. Outstanding. Well, probably to their, you know, not to defend them, but to defend them. They probably never heard of him before. And they hear this story, so their automatic assumption is, oh, he must be a Republican. Oh, come on. It's Washington, I, D.C. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. And Virginia's right there. Yeah. Did you know who the governor of Virginia was? No, but if I lived in Washington, D.C., I'd probably know who the governor is of uh, Virginia and Maryland. It, well, it could have been the New York, CNN. Yeah, it could be. Or CNN also has Atlanta. and. Yeah, that's true. But it looks terrible for them. You'd think somebody in the damn newsroom would catch that crap. It's, no one can look that up? Right. Well, it's probably not in any of the stories you see anywhere. That's the other game that they always play. Yeah. No I, political affiliation. If if you're reading an article about some politician who's fucked up, broken the law, or done something you know, suspect, or is accused of something... 
and you don't see the political affiliation, you can damn well bet 100 percent it's a Democrat. Oh, the Bob Menendez case is a perfect example of that. I mean, you'd see so many stories. It'd be like buried in paragraph nine, Democrat. Like, oh, (laughs) okay. Yeah. Todd Aiken, the face of the Republican Party. Yes. (laughs) Unreal. Unreal. So uh, this is going to be interesting to see if this this guy survives my question is this why now why did this come up now and who leaked that that yearbook i i have a theory okay because um as we all know politics is evil Mm-hmm. And you can't trust anyone. Uh, who has the most to gain from this photo coming out? I, I don't know. What are you thinking on this? Uh, the Virginia L- Lieutenant Governor, Justin Fairfax. Uh, okay. Listen, I'm not uh, making accusations. I'm just asking. I'm asking questions, Tracy. <laughs> no, I, I follow you. I follow you. And uh, interesting to note, he is black. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't standing beside the governor at his press conference today. No. So I see what you're getting at there. In fact, he came out with a statement saying, I cannot condone the actions from his past. Did he strongly condemn? Uh, he just can't condone it. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. Uh, and maybe that's one of the reasons too, why so many Democrats are so willing to throw, uh, this governor, uh, under the bus. And for good reason, by the way, I don't mm-hmm. know. but here's, here's the, the question I have for you. Okay. His political career is, is over. I think we can all agree on that, right? Yeah. Ralph, Ralph Northam. Uh, how long should he have to pay for a photo or group of photos that were published in his yearbook from the 1980s? Like, how, how, how far should this dog him? Should he? Because I've, you know how it is, especially on the social media mob, when they go after someone. It's uh, you. You should never work again. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, he'll find work. He'll be fine. I gotta believe he'll he'll get a gig as a lobbyist or something, don't you think? Yeah, probably. I don't see any reason he won't, not to. I mean, if the guy apologizes and uh, he's, it actually seems like he's being sincere. Uh, but to me, this shows his true character. He he knows who was in that picture. Come yeah. on, it's your yearbook. I could go, but I remember I was in uh, three or four pictures in my yearbook, and if I look back at those photos, of my senior yearbook, I can remember where that was and when it was. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me he look at that photo and not know exactly when that was and where it was. Stop it. Right. Well, and we're supposed to believe that the yearbook staff just got a hold of that photo. Right. They just found it. I'm still stunned that not only did he, he thought it was a good idea. Uh, the yearbook staff thought it was a good idea. <laughs> Whatever faculty was involved thought it was a good idea to put that in the yearbook. Yeah. Weird, wild stuff. Uh, well, I think we've talked that to death. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what else you want to talk about? Oh, let's see. What else we got going on here? We can talk about um, Tulsi Gabbard is apparently a stooge for the Russians now. This is fascinating. I find this so interesting. They they hate her. And we knew that was coming. And she's set to a, a formally announce today. Mm. I don't understand this whole exploratory committee and then announce. 
Oh, I, I do. Is it money? It's not just money. It's you got to start creating a buzz. If you just announce mm-hmm. over the, you know, out of the blue that you're running, you only get, you know, a, a day, a day's worth of coverage, maybe two. Sure. But if you announce a week or two ahead of time, oh, you know what? We're going to we're going to put together a blue ribbon committee. We're going to explore this possibility. <laughs> like was there any doubt in anyone's mind that Elizabeth Warren was going to run, that Kamala Harris was going to run, that Cory Booker was going to run. You know, they make these announcements, oh, we got it. We're going to put a committee together, an exploratory committee. I mean, so far, the only one that dropped out that I thought was going to run was the mayor of Los Angeles. Yes. Garcetti. Yeah. I thought he was going to run, and he ended up uh, saying, no, I'm, I'm not going to run, and then gave some ridiculous speech about how uh, we look to Washington uh, for, you know, our, our leaders are better angels. Mm. And what we have now is... Uh, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, the complete disaster and so div- div- uh, divisive. I'm always amused that uh, there's only divisive r- rhetoric when it's a Republican standing up for himself. Yes. That's divisive rhetoric. But uh, he's the only one so far that I, you know, there was a buzz. Um, I don't know if he had an exploratory committee. <laughs> Do you know? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But everyone uh, so far that we thought was going to run uh, is going to run. But, okay, so Russia. Yeah, so it, NBC uh, News had a headline today. Russia's propaganda machine discovers 2020 Democratic candidate Tulsi Gabbard. It, it, this is such an incredible joke. So the subhead is experts who track websites and social media linked to Russia have seen stirrings of a possible campaign. Do you hear these words? Possible? Yeah. Campaign of support for Hawaii Democrat Tulsi Gabbard. So do you know who they turn to as their expert in this? The, <laughs> the people that are experts in Russian trolls is the group that was involved with that fake trolling campaign done in Alabama. Oh, really? Yes, this is how disgusting and duplicitous and just full of shit the media are when it comes to this Russia stuff. I just love the sudden interest in foreign meddling in elections. It's it's amusing to me. I No, I want to know if Russia is trying to meddle in our elections. Well, at what point do you care if they're meddling? Like, well, what what constitutes meddling? I guess in in your mind, uh, raising money for one, which the Chinese okay. did for the Bill Clinton uh, reelection campaign in 1996. But yes, we'll we'll forget about that. That's okay because the right guy won, <laughs> so we're cool. Bob Dole, Bob Dole lost. He would have lost anyway, by the way. Uh, but you know, since uh, it was a Democrat that run, ran and and won. Um, and got help from a foreign government uh, that we're, we're not going to worry about. That's old news. That's ancient history. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, I want to know. I wanted to know if the Chinese were meddling in the election in 1996. I want to know, uh, you know, if the Russians are trying to meddle. And I expect these governments to try to meddle in our elections. We expect them to try to influence it. Yeah. Right. Well, I think there's a difference. Meddle. Okay, fine. They're, they're going to try to influence uh, what's going on in our elections, just like we do in, in foreign elections. I know. Imagine that, right? And that's one of the things that they're mad at her about on the left is that Tulsi has come out and said, it, you know, we meddle in people's elections. <gasps> what? You can't say that out loud. <laughs> Are you insane? We would never do such a thing. Right. Give me a break. This is a joke. Isn't Brennan, Brennan is a paid contributor over at MSNBC, right? I think so. Yeah. But listen, I don't, I don't think there's, uh, I have no issue if there were a genuine investigation to find out how much Russia tried to influence our election in 2016. I'll use influence instead of metal. But 
the problem well, I mean, is is that people are trying to latch on to that and act like that if if there was any kind of effort made by the Russians to influence our presidential election there is no introspection within the uh, the Democratic Party it's oh that's why Hillary lost no Hillary Hillary lost because she was a shitty candidate who everyone hated including half the Democrats that voted for her and she completely ignored Rust Belt states and that's why she lost. It had nothing to do with the Russians. But there's no... You have to... There's always a reason why a Democrat loses and it has no... Uh, it's to no fault of the Democrat. Right? It's always... Uh, it's stolen from them. Or someone was meddling. Mm-hmm. It wasn't uh, your candidate sucked. No. But I think oh. it's fair to want to know if someone is uh, a foreign country is trying to influence your election. If we have uh, a fair interpretation of the data, instead of just uh, you know taking whatever information that is uh, attained from an investigation and try to frame a narrative. Well, and that's what they're doing here. So reading from this story. They say uh, Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii, who is set to make her formal announcement Saturday, has become a favorite of the sites Moscow used when it interfered in 2016. So several experts who track these websites and social media linked to the Kremlin have also seen what they believe, note the word believe, (laughs) may may be the first stirrings of an upcoming Russia campaign of support for her. So here's where this is their evidence. So since she announced her intention to run on January the 11th, there have been at least 20 count that. That's huge. 20. That's a big number, right? (laughs) Gabbard stories on three major Moscow based English language websites affiliated with or supportive of the Russian government. (laughs) RT, Sputnik News, and a radio outlet called Russia Insider. <laughs> this is what they're... Are, are you kidding me? Oh, my God. They've run 20 stories between three network, between three different news networks. This runs Holy deeper shit. than I thought, Tracy. I know. What are you going to do? <laughs> All three sides celebrated Gabbard's announcement, defended her positions on Russia and her 2017 meeting with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, and attacked those who have suggested she's a pawn for Moscow. There, the proof right there. They attacked anybody who claims she's a pawn of them. <laughs> well, and my other thought, which they don't mention at all, why is Russia turned on Trump? Right? I mean... They have their pawn in the White House, <laughs> according to these same people. There's a why lot of they, mental why would they gymnastics support anybody? at play here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> who are the famous Russian gymnasts of the 80s? Uh, Nadia Komanich. There you go. That's who they've become on this. Uh, wow. Yeah. No, it's 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 amusing to watch. And uh, look, I obviously you 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 track this stuff more than I do, Tracy. I, mm-hmm. I I've heard mm-hmm. of Russia today. Got a friend who works mm-hmm. at Russia today. Yeah. Is she a puppet of Putin's? <laughs> Has she met Putin? <sighs> I, I'm afraid she can't answer that question, Tracy, for fear she'll be poisoned. <laughs> well, and you know, I was pissed. They took away RT used to be carried by Comcast, but now they're, they're some foreign influence pusher. So they took them away from me on cable. Explain. I really would like someone a fair-minded individual to sit down and explain to me how you can take RT away but have Al Jazeera America on. Uh-huh. Well, would someone oh, you sit would down never and... get a straight answer on that. Ever. And I've watched both of them. I watch Al Jazeera America sometimes. They did some decent documentaries. And I've I've heard that RT is actually loaded with a lot of libertarians. Yeah, they have more libertarians on than any other network I've ever seen. And actually, like, more on the far, like, ANCAP side of that whole world. So, like, the the real extremists, as the left will call them, you know, the no government whatsoever t- types, which is the school that I come from. 
So I love seeing those guys on there and they'll have them debating like a hardcore admitted communist. That to me is interesting. It's better than watching two people that are political hacks for their respective parties. Why are you in bed with Putin? Oh, because he's got a really nice bed. (laughs) And he wrestles bears. Yeah. In the bed. (laughs) But you, okay, so you had RT. And then what were the other two again? Sputnik Radio? Sputnik Sputnik News. At least Stranahan works there now. He's actually talked about in this article as as, uh, backing Gabbard's run and saying, like, he's interested in her. And, you know. Can we call it Sputnik? It's Sputnik. Yeah, but when you do the Russian uh, accent, don't they say Sputnik? Oh, yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't there know, was, I there, ask yeah, there was a time when you used to do uh, a mean Russian accent. Oh, yes. I like doing <laughs> Russian accents. So, Stranahan, who now talks like this because he worked for Sputnik News, <laughs> he is host of a show called Fault Line, which is him and a liberal guy. It's every day they live stream on Twitter. You can watch their video feed. But he said... Um, <laughs> The significant thing about her, this is Gabbard, being in the race is because of one of her main issues is peace and specifically on Syria, where she's telling the truth on Syria. And they say Stranahan, who joined Sputnik after stints at Breitbart, the right wing news site. <laughs> oh, they didn't say alt right. They just said right no. wing. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, they backed off that. <laughs> so he says, this is Stranahan again. I think she's going to change the debate if she can get through the first few months and make it to actual debates there's big millionaire or billionaire that will support <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard <laughs> and by that he means Putin of course yeah of course I, I, yeah. I gotta work on my Russian accent because I thought it would have been Sputnik oh it's so much fun no it's Sp- Sputnik I mean I guess it depends I don't know regional accents very well and I've just kind of made that one up <laughs> so uh and what but, was the other? Okay, you had Sputnik, and then what was the other? Uh, it was a radio. Let me find that part again. Because this is quite a lengthy article, of course, to prove all this, full of facts and evidence. But, uh, Russia Insider. Russia Insider. There are more people who listen to blog talk radio mm-hmm. than yeah. Russian Insider. But it's just so funny to me to pretend that like CNN International isn't some propaganda arm for our government to the rest of the world, right? Well, Armed Forces America. They don't call it that yeah, anymore, do they? No, it's a Voice of America. Voice of America. Yeah, we do the same things. So, but if you know, I mean, they're right in your face. It's not hiding it. It's called Sputnik in Russia today. <laughs> I think anybody that's watching it, even though they don't talk like I was just speaking for the most part, they don't have Russian commentators on there. They're all friggin' Americans. And they should, by the way. Yeah, I would like that. I'd like to see what they think about us. I still have this idea in my mind that they have nightly comedy shows where they just show <laughs> clips of MSNBC and CNN with every every new Russia freak out, and they all just crack up. You think th- that there's a Moscow... Uh, Moscow version of uh, Samantha B. Yes. <laughs> Just playing clips like, and making wacky look, faces. Stupid Rachel Maddow think we can shut down power grid in Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> what? We can't even run our own power grid. <laughs> Please, we have to wait in line for things here. We don't have time for <laughs> run power grid. You silly American. <laughs> you give us way too much credit. Oh, this is priceless. So the whole thing, though, that they they believe uh, the the Russians would be for her is for her Syria position. Is that what this yes. is all about? Okay, and, and yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and she's also pretty anti-war. Mm-hmm. And you know she, that she lends a lot more weight to that because she served, I think, it was two tours. You know, she's a major in the um, uh, what's it called, the Army Reserves. Okay. Yeah, that's so no joke. Wow. Yep. <laughs> I got to honestly when we're done here. Uh-huh. I've got to look up uh Sputnik Radio and uh what was the other one again? 
I'm I have to ask to. you like six times because I've never heard of this before. And yet, right, Russia and yet, Insider. Russia Insider, and yet apparently he, that it's just influencing Americans left and right. Yes, that's what it's all about. <laughs> People are just tuned to this. Do you know who was on RT? Larry King. Oh, well. Do <laughs> you think he's been bought off? <laughs> <sighs> he's some secret double agent and has been the whole time. Oh, boy. Is he is he selling a ginkgo biloba to people? Sure. Okay. Well, good for Larry King. How old is Larry King now? He's got to be 80, isn't he? I don't know. Let's find out. Give me two seconds, please. He is 85. Wow. Oh, wow. Even more shocking. He's only 5'9". Well, he, he was 6'2". Oh, okay. Back in his uh, 60s. Sitting under those lights for all those years. <laughs> yeah. Just shrinks one down. CNN's Mr. Burns. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I feel like Ed Schultz went over there when he got the boot from MSNBC. Mm-hmm. And where's there's, Ed there's now? Uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Peace be upon him. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. He didn't tell the line. That's right. Well enough. Yeah. We paid should a call visit. for an investigation. That's right. Good God. I know. It's so absurd. And I don't think that any amount of proof will ever stop these guys in their tracks. You you just if you get on Twitter for any length of time and follow Donald Trump and mm-hmm. see the responses to his tweets, mm-hmm. <laughs> how many people truly believe that Russia is the sole reason why he is president of the United States? Oh well, we have to start asking those people in those comments. Then why are they backing Tulsi now? It's a smokescreen. You wouldn't understand. Well, Okay. They're trying to, to spread division. Yeah. I mean, you guys are doing a damn good job of that yourselves. <laughs> Honestly, who's done more to divide the country, Russia or the American media? Oh, that's a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. And uh, talk about divisive. Never will they accept him as president of the United States. It's been a two-year temper tantrum not just by uh the left but the never trump right i'm i'm still floored by the never trump right at this point you're still seeing them whining and crying not as many of them yeah tracy in my i've never gotten my candidate i could go (laughs) all the way back to 92 the first time i voted for president. And my, my first vote was in the primary, and I voted for Pat Buchanan over George H.W. Bush. Well done. And I have 96, 2000, go right down the line. I've never gotten the candidate that I wanted to be president. And you know what I did? I moved on. I How accepted were you able it. to do that? I, it wasn't easy. One day at a time, Tracy. Get do you think you point. could offer an online class? <laughs> yes, I could, as a matter of fact. All right, we'll get to work on that. I will. It'll be uh, part of Scam Pack. Look for that there in the near future. $1,500. <laughs> Three-minute course. Uh, <laughs> but, no, I, it, it, I, I don't know if it this Marco Rubio thing, if it was they just mm. had their hearts so set on Marco Rubio, because it seems like most of the Never Trumpers I've run into were huge Marco Rubio supporters. Yes, there were a few Cruz fans, but mo- I think you're right. I think it was about an 80-20 split. Oh, this romance. Rubio. Yeah, this romance with Marco Rubio. I- I've never understood it. No. C- can you explain it to me? No, I don't get it at all. Unless it's the identity politics game that they've fallen into. It's like, oh, we can have a minority. Yeah, that has to be it. Oh, he's young yeah. and-, and women find him good looking, apparently. Is he a good-looking guy? He's all right until you find out he's like five four. <laughs> he sweats all the time, and he has that weird thing where he gets completely parched. Larry King towers over him. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. 
I'm sorry, I come from a family of height supremacists. <laughs> he would walk up to Larry King and call him Stretch? Is, is that what we're going with? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, he'd have to pull on his shirt sleeve to get him to bend down so he could talk in his ear. <laughs> oh, so you need, a, you need a step ladder to see him at a phone party? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> yes. I know. You just bring up Rubio so you can get in phone party. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh. kids ask Jeeves about phone parties and Marco <laughs> Rubio uh, not that there's anything wrong with that <laughs> no but no I have never understood I mean there are two different times in Marco Rubio's uh, during Marco Rubio's campaign for president where I was just like oh this guy's such a weasel there was one and I don't know if you remember this where he got on uh, Fox News and slammed Breitbart mm. and said there were, uh, he took Breitbart's press passes away from uh, his campaign and, and said this was just a fringe website. And two days earlier, he had an op-ed in Breit- on Breitbart.com. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you slippery shit. It wasn't yeah. two or three days ago you thought so much of Breitbart.com that you wrote an op-ed that appeared on the, the very front of Breitbart.com, and now all of a sudden they're... What happened in two days that made them a fringe site? And then uh, I believe there was a, a vote for a... Uh, it was a shutdown vote where his mm-hmm. vote would have been pivotal and he didn't show up to vote? Oh, I remember that, yeah. And it's like, oh, oh, he didn't show up to vote. He was very busy. <laughs> There's a lot of dry cleaner runs that have to be done when you're a phone party <laughs> aficionado. Right. <laughs> oh, look at you <laughs> jumping in on the phone party jokes. Oh, they just write themselves, really. <laughs> I'm just a vehicle for them to enter the world. <laughs> Uh, I get all of my phone party jokes from Russia Insider. <laughs> Watch, it's going to become your new favorite thing. <laughs> you know what? I think it's going to. This is this is the deal. Uh, let me first of all let me, and I know just by googling this, I'm going to be put on a list. Uh, Russia Insider. I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> you two. A Google search for Russia Insider. Uh huh. Russia Insider. Crowdfunded citizen journalism with a punch! Exclamation point. Oh. Well. So, Sounds very Kremlin y. Yeah, yeah. So I think that w- maybe we're going to have to have a new feature here on Enough Already <laughs> where we <laughs> read the headlines, the top stories over at RussiaInsider.com. Good. I think we should just go to all three of them, and, and the whole show can be based off of them. Terrorist Russia is coming to take away heat from your family in minus fifty degree winter, says MSNBC's <laughs> Pigeon Lady, and it's a picture of Rachel Maddow. <laughs> they call her the Pigeon Lady. It appears that they do. That's interesting. I could see that she kind of has some pigeon-like <laughs> tendencies. I just think of them like pecking in the way they move their heads. She kind of does that. You know what I also thought, and this is horrible, and that's why I'm going to say it. She kind of looks like the MAGA hat kid. Well, she has the smirk. I know. I'm like, if you just put a MAGA hat on her, put those two side by side, I don't know if you could pick out which one is which. Another story, the single stupidest argument from the entire stupid salad of Russiagate. <laughs> they have really good stories over there. <laughs> oh, I actually read that story. Oh, you now did? Now I think about it, because I was like, yeah, no, it was written by a lefty that I follow on Twitter. Her name is Caitlin Johnstone, I think. Mm-hmm. It's, quite a good, uh, it's quite a good article. Lou Rockwell had it on LouRockwell.com, but I also follow her on Twitter, because she's one of the few on the left that's just like, you guys are insane with this Russia shit. Like, just stop. And that's what that whole article is about. No, she had a really great line in there that you should try to find. So, like, in the third or fourth paragraph, she goes on a little rant because she was trashing 
somebody, Josh Rogan, is that his name? From The Intercept or something like that? Caitlin Johnstone. Um, yeah. Yeah, Josh Rogan. Yeah. Just destroying him and his stupid, yeah, the stupidest arguments of the entire stupid salad. See, I like the stupid salad line. Yeah. I thought that was really great. Yeah, this is what <laughs> she's talking about this post that uh, uh, or Josh Rogan responded to a Tulsi Gabbard tweet where Tulsi Gabbard says the United States need to see, needs to stay out of Venezuela. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I'll let the Venezuelan people determine their future and we don't want other countries to choose our leaders. So we have to stop trying to choose theirs. So Josh Rogan retweets with the comment, again, Tulsi Gabbard shares the same foreign policy position as Russia and the Assad regime. It's probably just a coincidence. <laughs> Hashtag Tulsi Assad 2020. So this is why Caitlin Johnstone went after him. So she, <laughs> Caitlin replies, this man calls himself a journalist. He works for one of the most respected and influential news outlets in America. Rogan's post is obnoxious and idiotic for a whole host of reasons, among them the fact that Trump is consistently painted as a Kremlin stooge by pundits like Rogan, yet opposing Trump is somehow being depicted as Kremlin servitude. And now this is my favorite sentence. But the reason his tweet deserves an article of its own today is because the argument he is using is one you see reoccurring over and over again in the psychotic, pants on head, screaming at traffic, (laughs) (laughs) stupid salad that is collectively referred to as Russiagate. Yes, I love that. Pants on head, screaming at traffic. <laughs> Stupid salad. <laughs> That's such a good visual. Yeah. But I really, I like her stuff a lot. So I guess she's a Russian stooge. I should tell her this. Well, she probably already knows, though. Yeah, That's true. Yeah. Well, uh, you no, know, uh, don't don't say too much. I don't want to see her get poisoned. No, no, no. Wow. I, okay, <laughs> you know how they have the the little icons for social media sites, mm-hmm. you know Facebook, Twitter. This is mm-hmm. the first site I've ever seen that has an icon for Gab. Oh, good for them! What does that even look like? Uh, well, it has Gab, and then it looks like uh, Peppy the Frog. <laughs> <laughs> look at the top right hand corner. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see it. That's, yeah, follow them on Gab, yep. And tell her, interesting. But they don't have it as a share button on the story. No. No, but. Well, listen, for, uh, and, and again, uh, I don't want anyone uh, being sent uh, to me to, to <laughs> give me any poison. Uh, Russia Insider for a news organization that apparently is uh, swaying the American people. They've got tons of influence. On Twitter, 1,700... Oh, that's Gab. 1,750 people are following him on Gab. wonder what they mm-hmm. are, are like on Twitter. May, 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 oh, I, I'm underestimating them, maybe, Tracy. You could be, but I mean, it looks like it's an aggregation site. They've got an article from uh, Pat Buchanan on there. I don't think that he writes exclusives for Russia Insider. And then they got a bunch of pieces by Tyler Durden, who is a pseudonym used by the guy that runs Zero Hedge. 35,000 people follow them on Twitter. 35,000? Mm-hmm. Huge. Do they have a blue check or no? No. They have <sighs> a blue check on Gab, but not on, not on Twitter. There you go. Russia Insider. Yeah, speaking of uh, Twitter, Jack Dorsey was on with uh, Joe Rogan yesterday. What was that conversation like? Uh, it was pretty interesting. I'm, all, I'm through about 80% of it, I would say. Anything shock to. you? Well, it kind of shocked me. They got into it a little bit. I was wondering if Rogan was going to ask him about kicking people off. Yeah. And like how, how they determine that. And he they kind of got into it a little bit. And they, ta- they talked about Alex Jones because Alex and uh, Rogan have been friends for a long time. Right. And... Uh, he asked Jack, he's just like, you know, all those other places kind of threw him off and then you guys didn't. And then, you know, everybody thinks you guys kicked him off because if you'll remember, Jones confronted Dorsey when Dorsey was testifying in front of Congress. Did he, did he call Dorsey CIA? <laughs> no, I'm not everybody sure. Everybody knows that. 
CIA. <laughs> yeah. I'm Operation Mockingbird. Yeah, CIA, so him, and, him and Woody Woodpecker. We all know CIA. Yep, yep, yep. Um, <laughs> but, and then Jack's like, no, that's not that's not why we threw him off. He violated our terms of service. And Rogan said, okay, well, what did he do? And he's like, you know, I don't really remember, or I don't really know. <laughs> and I'm like, really? really? You're not prepared to answer that question? I mean, that was one of the most controversial removals from the platform or at least high profile because they held out when everybody else booted Jones. Right. And they looked like, Oh, okay. Maybe somebody's not as censorious as the rest of them, but then they dropped the ax on him too. And now you're going to tell me that you don't know why that happened. You can't remember what it was that he did. Come so on. They dumped him. They dumped Gavin McGinnis. Mm hmm. Well, they dumped Milo, and they did. They talked about Milo a little bit, but they he didn't. Joe brought him up because Joe was saying his whole thing on his show is he likes to let everybody come in there so he can actually ask them questions and get to the bottom of what it is that they think and and that kind of stuff. And he said, you know, I had Milo on, and people were giving me a bunch of shit about it. And then for my interview with him was one of the things that sparked his eventual downfall. Because he was talking about how he thought it was appropriate for older men to have relationships with younger men. Yeah. And he's like, and look what happened. Like, that's because I gave him the space to speak. And I think that you should do that. And then he didn't ask Dorsey, like, why you threw him off. Because I don't think Dorsey can defend the reasons that they gave at the of time for throwing not. Milo off. No. Uh, how many high profile lefties have been thrown off Twitter? I can't think of a single one. And there have been some vile and disgusting things that have been tweeted. On, and it simply amazes me that they continue to be able to look into a camera like a, a Joe Rogan show with with a straight face and act like, oh, there, there's no political bias. I mean, there are some. Yeah, he didn't push that too much. Because you have to keep in mind, like, Rogan's not a journalist. He's not trying to. Right. He'd, he'd rather get along with him, I think, to a certain extent and don't push it too far. Like, you watched his interview with Mike Tyson. Yeah. And it's like, he didn't go anywhere controversial with him. No, there was no rape talk or anything like that. He no. He's always looking to find common ground with the people that he has on the show. Yeah. Um, and I can understand that. It's a different thing. It's not combative. Oh, and it's a it's a breath of fresh air. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you got me listening to... Uh, his podcast, I, I think that he does an incredible job. Yeah. Um, and it, they're entertaining and informative podcasts that people should listen to. Um, the only thing I don't get about it, and you and I have talked about it, I mean, hell, back when we first started this podcast, we were doing three-hour shows. Mm -hmm. And I just can't hang that long. I, I watch what I do, and I think that, you know, the Rogan crew they do a fantastic job of pulling compelling clips from the show mm -hmm. and put them on youtube where it's like okay uh hey uh joe talked to jordan peterson today about this and it's 10 minutes long or 15 minutes long and it's really interesting but three hours holy crap <laughs> i really admit on who the guest is you know yeah sometimes you can watch the, the whole three hours and be like wow i can't believe that was three hours because I was riveted the whole time. Yeah. Like the last time Alex Jones was on, I think they went for four hours. <laughs> the and last it was just time unbelievable. Alex Jones was on, did, did he smoke pot? Yes. On the show? Yes. And he's got some bullshit where he's just like, I got to test the pot once a year because George Soros was putting chemicals in it or like something. <laughs> You know, he's behind the uh, the potency of the pot out here, Joe. So I just got to, I got to see what the kids are getting their hands on. So it was all for research purposes. Uh, listen, I, I've said this many times. I'll listen to Alex Jones, and like you'll sit there for maybe 45 minutes to an hour and nod and agree with most of what he's saying. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep, that makes sense. Yep. And then he'll pull something out of his ass. <laughs> Jonas Brothers, you know they're CIA. I know it. You know it. Everybody knows that. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, why you gotta do that, Alex? But <laughs> oh, but uh, no, it's uh, Rogan does a great job. But it, it just is so frustrating to see 
if, if you've spent any time researching uh, left wing media and some of the crackpot crazy sites that are out there, mm-hmm. and there's absolutely no consequences. It's, there are no consequences for for some of these people tweeting the most vile and disgusting things. That uh, you know, you don't see them get suspended. You don't hear of uh, them even getting. Uh, you, you, you know, you see some of the people on on the right, like Dana Lash, the the hate that's thrown her way. And a mm-hmm. lot of times, it's just like, oh yeah, we investigated uh, that really awful tweet where someone threatened you or your family, and we found that it didn't violate our, our terms of use. You're like, really? Right. And he, Rogan, got Dorsey to admit, you know, they they police. Twitter for doxing and they did kind of talk about the Covington situation and Joe even mentioned Kathy Griffin by name and saying like she was calling for these people's names but never pushed it to the point where like why do you excuse that kind of behavior and I found that to be a little bit frustrating it's like you've opened that door now by by broaching that subject just ask the question Joe we all want to know like how is she still allowed to do that right Why isn't she thrown off the platform? Was she even given a warning? She hasn't taken the tweets down as far as I know. But again, that's, I think that that's Joe letting people come to their own conclusion based on the conversation. And on top of it, I'm sure that, um, he doesn't want the kind of hate thrown at him by, you know, not so much Kathy Griffin, but the people who support Kathy Griffin. I mean, he already takes a lot of shit from, from people. Just for ha- yeah. giving a platform for people like, oh, you know, we're going to have a, a discussion with Ben Shapiro today. Yeah. Oh, why are you having that Nazi on? Yeah. Ben Shapiro, a mm. Nazi. Yes. Two, three seconds of research, please. Just look at a photo of him. <laughs> I'm serious. He's always wearing his yarmulke. Unless that there's a, a swastika on the top of it that you just can't see very well. I, I really don't understand how this works. Yeah. Again, the mental He's gymnastics. Super right. <laughs> They've got him oh, writing for man. Russia Insider as we speak. Yes. I'm surprised they're not syndicating his columns. <laughs> wow. But speaking of all of that, the, the uh, Covington... Kids are going to get their revenge. We talked about it when it was going down, but um, the lawyer Robert Barnes came out this week and named the people that he's suing. Do you have some of the names in front of you? I do. It is. Uh, this is from the Epic Times website. In a January 26 Fox News interview, Robert Barnes specifically mentioned Reza Aslan, an Iranian American writer and commentator, and he's a CNN commentator. I'm pretty sure he's a paid commentator there. Matthew Dowd, ABC News political analyst and former chief strategist for George W. Bush. Imagine that. <laughs> uh, an actor, Michael Rappaport, and the New York Daily News. Wow. Yeah. Rappaport could talk some shit, boy. Yeah, did you see the video of him talking shit? No, I didn't. I didn't see it. But I just as a fan of the Howard Stern show, mm. uh, listening to he could talk some shit. Uh, and so and he, I know he's gotten very political lately and he's very yes. anti Trump. So, uh, yeah, how bad he put was out it? a video. It was bad. It was bad. I don't know if it's still up or not, but it was up as of the writing of this piece, which came out on the 28th. So some people just cannot acknowledge that they are wrong and they dig their heels in. I, I, they truly believe that these kids were Hitler youth and it, it doesn't matter how much evidence points mm-hmm. to uh, them being innocent of what they're, they were being accused of. It doesn't matter. Um, they deserve any hate that was thrown their way because of those damn hats. So ridiculous. Well, we're well over an hour in, Tracy. Yeah, we are. You got anything else you want to talk about? No, sir. You can catch the Enough Already podcast on Stitcher, SoundCloud, TuneIn, 
iTunes, you know, and we haven't asked for this in a long time, but if you could throw a review our way on iTunes, that really helps us out. The more reviews we get, it it affects the algorithms. Mm-hmm. Algorithms. That's the kids. <laughs> kids say algorithms. And, uh, you know, when you're uh, opening iTunes, it, it may put this podcast... Um, out there where more people can see it. So if you could leave us a, a review, preferably five stars. But uh, you can catch us there and, of course, on BitChute and YouTube, Tracy. Mm-hmm. And it's and very... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, well, I think I was going to say what you're going to say. And that's uh, we need to let everyone know that you can also catch us over at our website, which is back up and running, enoughalready.us. That's what I was going to say. And I stepped on your toes. I apologize. That's okay. It only hurt a little bit. Please don't send your boyfriend Putin over to my house. (laughs) He's busy with a bear right now. (laughs) Offer me some brownies. Uh, All right. Final thoughts? Well, I think the Super Bowl is going to suck tomorrow. But we'll see if that holds up on Monday. Can both teams lose? Is that possible? I guess the game could get canceled for some reason. Oh, and did you see that uh, you had it in the dock? They spent $29 million on a bridge for the Super Bowl? Yeah. <laughs> a, a pedestrian bridge in Atlanta. Yeah. I think it was $23 million. It was 23 whatever. Million. It was tw- in excess of $20 million for a pedestrian bridge to connect the public transportation to the stadium so people don't have to cross the street because nobody knows how to cross the street. Right. And uh, because of security, they can't use it when people are arriving. They can only People can only use it when they're exiting. I like to call because it everybody's the... Everybody's got to get padded down. Yeah, I like to call it the Super Bowl Bridge to Nowhere. Yes. <laughs> so they spent all that money and uh, now they're not going to be able to use it. But no, I normally I would have been rooting for the Rams, but mm-hmm. the the officials screwed the New Orleans Saints over in such a huge way. If if they would have called that penalty for pass interference, the the uh, Saints would have had the ball on the Rams' three yard line and could have basically run the clock down to three seconds and kicked the field goal and won it. Wow! And so you know, it's like I really don't want them to win. And you know, there there's also the Alex Jones conspiracy part of me that says, well, they, the NFL wants a Los Angeles team in the Super Bowl because they've been wanting mm-hmm. to build this LA fan base for years. Uh, and but, but then they're playing the Patriots, and who wants the Patriots to win? Gross. Trump, maybe. <laughs> Just because that's his boy Brady. Oh, speaking of his boy, he's golfing with Jack Nicholas. And Tiger. Oh, and Tiger, Tiger Woods, too? Yeah, it was yeah. Jack Nicholson Tiger today. Wow. And if you read the comments on that tweet, it's all, oh, shouldn't you be working? <laughs> you gave shit to the Democrats when they went to Puerto Rico. Uh, the, the difference was the government was shut down then, you fools. Doesn't matter. No, Trump gave up his Christmas. He gives up his salary. Give the man a Saturday on his golf course with Tiger and Jack Nicholas. And good on those two for allowing themselves to be photographed and have that shared with the world. Well, Jack Nicholas doesn't give a shit. I mean, at this no, point, no, and Tiger he's like, shouldn't really either. Well, no, Tiger shouldn't either. But at least Tiger ha- Tiger has more to lose than Jack Nicholas. I mean, Jack Nicholas is probably seventy five years old, and you know he's made his money. Uh, you know, I could see right now. I'm sure if you get on the if you look at the comments from the tweet, I'm sure there are people calling for a boycott of any <laughs> Tiger Woods sponsors. Uh, mm. endorsement deals. Oh, boycott Nike, boycott. I, you just see it coming. I mean, the fact that the, it, it's simply this is how stupid people are. And I don't know if we talked about this last week, but you know, the CEO, the former CEO of Starbucks, is talking about you know he's running for president, uh, Howard Schultz. And you have people on the left that are so pissed off that he's going to run because he's going to be the next Jill Stein and pe- peel voters mm-hmm. away. 
uh, from whoever will be the uh, Democratic nominee, uh, Democratic candidate for president of the United States, that they want to boycott Starbucks. Now, who's that going to hurt? The, their fellow classmates are now baristas. <laughs> right! Does anyone think anything through? No. They don't, and they'll forget, and they're all addicted to that. Yeah. So, good luck. I mean, it's easy when they call for boycotts of stuff that they don't like. Right. But, yeah, we'll see. They'll be sneaking it. Wait till you need a bathroom. Yeah. (laughs) See who's boycotting Starbucks then. Oh, God. Okay, so anyway, catch the, the Enough Already podcast uh, at all those platforms, wherever fine podcasts are found. Uh, she's Tracy. I'm Fingers. We'll be back soon with another Enough Already.